Who will carry this flag? Who will carry it high? Jimmy Murphy said, I will, with a tear in his eye. We'll pick up this dream, we'll run with the ball. Till Busby is well, boys, we'll all heed the call. Together. Jimmy, you're the man. Jimmy, you're the man. Jimmy, you're the man who saved United. The airplane had crashed. Low speed was the snack. The slush on the runway caused too much drag. Seven angels were gone. Up to heaven they flew. With one more to follow, Big Duncan flew too. Again now. Jimmy, you're the man. Jimmy, you're the man. Jimmy, you're the man who saved United for three months or more. Jim conjured a team fit for United and the great boats be dream and the fans they all stand and they were walking along. They carried the flag boat away and let home. Jimmy, you're the man, come on. Jimmy, you're the man. Jimmy, you're the man who saved United. Matt picked up that flag. No sorrow or fears. We've planted it bravely for ten long, long years. We followed that flag with laughter and tears. Then for one at Wembley, the tears became cheers. My son, Jimmy, you're the man, you'll turn. Jimmy, you're the man who saved United. Who will carry this flag? Who will carry it high? Jimmy Murphy said, I will. With a tear in his eye. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Old Trafford for this incredibly special occasion. On this day, May the 3rd, 65 years ago, Jimmy Murphy led the Manchester United team out at Wembley Stadium to face Bolton Wanderers in the FA Cup final. To manage an FA Cup final in front of 100,000 people is incredibly special. But in 1958, less than three months after the darkest day in our club's history. This was nothing short of a miracle. 23 people lost their lives as a result of that fateful day in Munich. Eight members of that great Manchester United team, as well as officials, journalists, and airline staff. Others suffered physical and mental injuries that would remain with them forever. Manchester United was grieving and in crisis. Up stood Jimmy Murphy, who had missed the game in Belgrade whilst coaching Wales on their way to their first ever World Cup finals. Jimmy immediately rose to the challenge of keeping our club playing football and showing we would not be bowed by tragedy. What a job he did in the face of such adversity. 
In his own words, Jimmy said his only concern in the immediate aftermath of the Munich air disaster was to keep the red, rat, red flag flying. Jimmy did so much more than that. He was one of the main architects of rebuilding the clubs, rebuilding the club, and laying the foundations for a glorious future. Born a son of the Rhonda in South Wales, Jimmy dedicated his professional life to our great city and our great club. We owe him so much. He was not only instrumental in the creation of the Busby Babes, but also fulfilled a crucial role in fulfilling the talent of that next generation of academy players, which included another of United's holy trinity, George Best. His legacy is honoured through the Jimmy Murphy Centre at Carrington and the Jimmy Murphy Young Player of the Year Award last season won by Alejandro Canacho. But our fans have championed that Jimmy's contribution to the club was so great that there should also be recognition here at Old Trafford. As a club, we listen and agree with them. For the past year, we've been working with the fan groups to turn that vision in the reality we're about to see for the first time. There are so many people to thank for their contribution to that process. First and foremost, the Murphy family, many of whom we're delighted to welcome here today. The sculptor, Alan Herriot, who's done such a brilliant job, and the fan co coalition, which was the driving force behind the project. It's fitting that the statue stands at the Stretford end of Old Trafford, overlooking the location of the old ash cinder pitches where Jimmy would train the babes. A special place on a special day for a special part of Manchester United's history. Jimmy, we thank you for your immense contribution in building this great club. You will never be forgotten. And this next video shows how the statue has been developed in that spirit of collaboration. I needed to get it right because there's thousands of people looking to see the statue finished and complete and it has to be right. The, the process for me is um, you're working from photographs. Every photograph is taken from a different angle or a different time. So it's almost like an accumulation of all of those photographs to try and capture the character. The image was quite an iconic one. It was, it was, it was a Jimmy talking to two of the babes in between them. He was obviously extolling passion, drive and commitment and determination from them. He was a great uh, inspiration to the lads. He was a great team talker. He was a, a motivator. Um, and this photograph shows him, just come on lads, you know, this is what I want you to do. Um, and so that was, for me, the only pose it could be. He had to be in a tracksuit. I mean, Jimmy was always in rags. His tracksuit top was in rags. So that's what we've got on the statue. Now, in my case, I tend to use polystyrene foam and I build up on that framework and you can carve that back, build it up and carve it back. So at the end of the day, I ended up with a very accurate carving of the figure. The whole uh, statue is then handed over to the foundry and it's the mold making process. Once that's done, the foundry have a, a deep pit full of sand that's all dug out and the, the actual plaster is then covered with corrugated paper and then it's buried in the sand so that when the crucible is presented with the hot bronze so once that's done once it's poured cooled it's dug back out again and the outer case is smashed off so the statue is made in various sections 
welded together and those welds are then chased through to become invisible. It is a complicated process, I made it very simple there, uh, but it is, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's quite complicated. <laughs> This has been an, an incredible honour for me and uh, I've always said I'll die happy um, but I have to know that everybody is absolutely happy, particularly the family. I must know that they are happy with it. This is a great Tribute. What's in there? It's each a generation of kids growing up, but now they'll see a statue alongside Alex Lewis and Sir Apple being in the water mode. What's, what's his story like? You know, hopefully for generation after generation it'll be a story that will last. I'm proud of doing the job. I'm proud of actually producing a statue that the family's happy with. That's the main objective and I hope that the club and the fans will be happy with it. A huge day, not just for the family, but for the club. For the, the, fans. Fans, the fans are the most, most important thing. The fans, that's what, that's what counts the most. But to walk into this place where Alan works and see this, it is such an honour. It's incredible. It's, it just, just blows you away. People are easily forgotten. Statues are always there. Unequivocally, as far as I'm concerned, I think that's quite the best statue I've ever seen. It's incredible, it really is. I was pretty certain it would be emotional one way or another. I thought we'll get a reaction and of course we had the reaction that we hoped we would get, which was, um, and in particular, Paul well, was, was, was quite touched. And that's gratifying. Very emotional. The all of them. I mean, I walked in and shed a tear in front of you guys who have never met them. It's just a really emotional because it is grand and you know, it's captured his spirit. So. Please, will you give a round of applause to the award winning sculptor Alan Herriot? Thank you, Alan. Now, we've asked Paul Murphy along with Richard to present a very special gift on behalf and from the club. So uh, we're going to ask you to step forward, gentlemen, for the photographs. Thank you. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Alan Herriot. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. And I think it's only right that we do have a few words from you. So thank you very much indeed. Thank you so much. It's been an honour and a privilege. It really has. This is indeed a day for all of us to remember. And I have a number of people I would like to thank. I'd like to thank Alan and Warden, Association of Former Players, who first drew my attention to the possibility of a statue of Jimmy Murphy being commissioned. And then on to Pat Murphy. Sorry, Pat Burns. I beg your pardon, Pat. A leader of a fan-based coalition who contacted me. And to Manchester United Football Club, my thanks and gratitude for trusting me with this commission. In particular, I would like to thank Gary Hebblewhite, mainly for... Uh, to thank Gary for... Uh, my main point of contact was with the club, uh, was, was Gary, and for, this, and for his guidance and for making these past few days for myself and my wife so very special. The making of a statue is a team effort, so I would like to thank my friend Brian Castor and his fantastic team at Powder Hall Bronze Foundry in Edinburgh, that's in Scotland, for their skill and for their expertise. And finally, I'm so happy that Jimmy's family approved of my design and hope that uh, they will be happy with what we are about to see. I'm sure that this tribute will remind fans of all ages of this extraordinary individual. He was a guiding light throughout the darkest period in this club's history. Jimmy Murphy kept the red flag flying. And now as we continue, we have a special message from someone who 
Can't be with us here today, but we wanted to pay his own tribute to Jimmy. Aye, first of all, I'm sorry I can't be with you tonight in this special occasion to honour Jimmy Murphy, a fantastic person in the history of Manchester United. You only need to look at the books and realise that. But to me, when I first came to the club, he was a fantastic ally. He supported me and he gave me some fantastic advice all along. And uh, he was very emotional about his time at United because his heart was there. That's exactly why the reason that for that was. And when you look at um, the part he played, Jimmy Murphy, and take it over from Sir Matt, while Matt was recovering in Germany, and of course, uh, he's such an ally to, to Matt. Uh, and there was a partnership, fantastic partnership, and they created some fantastic teams. So tonight, you're honouring a very special man in his history with the club. And I want to say to all the Murphy family I know very well, enjoy it. All the best. Thank you, Sir Alex. Wonderful message. We are delighted that so many of the Murphy family are able to join us here this evening. It certainly is the family and the extended family. We're also delighted that Jimmy's son, Jim Jr., has kindly offered to say a few words on behalf of the family in celebration of his father. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jim Jr. to the stage. Good evening, everybody. I've got to try and omit things that have been said by other people. Firstly, thanks to certain people, the manage, managing directors and the directors uh, of the club, the various fan groups have got together to help organise this. The ex-professional footballers committee, who've already been mentioned, including Alan Wardle, who've been campaigning for something like this for a long, long time. I'm especially friendly with the academy staff. I try and go to the academy uh, every time they're playing at home. And they keep the Jimmy Murphy tradition going down there. People like Tony Whelan, Paul McGuinness, Dave Bushell, Cliff Butler. Jimmy and Winnie had six children. Two girls, Pat and Anne, four boys, John, Phil, Nick and myself. And we're lucky that we're all here tonight. Winnie Murphy was the star and the hero of the family. It's hard to explain uh, Jimmy Murphy unless you live with him. Or in our case, didn't live with him because he was never in. He spent several nights a week coaching youngsters at the cliff. He was on scouting trips. I only found out after he died that he used to run some of the training camps. Something that never knew happened. But when he was a star and a hero, she was a glue in the family during Jimmy's many absences. If you can imagine what the house was like in the weeks and months after the Munich air crash, the phone never stopped ringing. Unfortunately for myself, I used to do my homework in the room where the phone was, and I was doing all levels that year, so I didn't do as well with my exam as I thought I might. Not blaming my father for that, but it was his fault. <laughs> what hasn't been mentioned tonight, as well as his uh, looking after the Reds after the crash, is the fact that he won the Youth Cup five years on the run, in the early 50s. 53 was the first time they won it. I've got a photograph at home, and there's a, a lad here tonight from the Daily Mail who wrote an article a few years ago, and it was from 1951 when my father and Bert Wally took a team of youngsters down to South Wales to play a friendly match. And this was the Busby Babes starting because she had Ray Wood, Billy Fawkes, Mark Jones, Jeff Bent, Jackie Blanchflower, Jeff Whitefoot, Dennis Violet and several others. So they were already <coughs> setting the tradition of what was to come later. He was successful with Wales as well during the World Cup and, and that year he was offered three jobs. He was offered the manager's job at Arsenal. He was offered the Juventus job by John Charles on behalf of that club. 
and after his success in the World Club, he was approached by the FA of Brazil and offered a coaching job there. So that's the character of man he was. Three top jobs, he turned them all down. He loved it here. I must mention pre-Munich, Joe Armstrong and Bert Wally. They're the two that helped create the Busby Babes. Uncle Joe, as he's called, the Chief Scout, a lovely little man. And Bert Wally, a, a terrific coach for the young lads of 15, 16, 17 joining. Completely different character to my father. He never swore. And Joe Armstrong again after Munich. He was a shoulder to cry on for dad and help and support. If you imagine what would happen today with the Munich air crash, the amount of publicity, the support my father would have got, the counselling, he didn't have any of that. What he had was a strong wife at home and a family and a resolve to get on with the job. I know the board of directors wanted the club to drop out for that season and dad said no, there's a job there and I can do it and that's what he did. It's been mentioned before tonight, and my brother Nick said it in the MUTV programme about Jimmy Murphy. If there'd been a bed down here, Dad would have stayed here. And now he's got to right to sleep. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. That was an absolutely fantastic tribute, and I'm sure your dad would be very proud to see you and your whole family here today. Well, we've now reached the moment that we're all gathered here to see. Can I please invite the presentation party? Jimmy's daughters, Anne and Pat, and of course two of the 1968 European Cup winners, Alex Stepney and Brian Kidd, to come forward and formally unveil the statue. You can keep the round of applause going until they walk up the steps. It's a walk of honour. As you can see, ladies and gentlemen, this is being done without a rehearsal. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure once again to invite Ann and Pat and Alex Stepney and Brian Kidd to do the unveiling on the count of three. One, two, three. Come on, a nice round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. The unveiling of the Jimmy Murphy statue here at Old Trafford. Congratulations, and of course, our heartfelt thanks to everyone involved in this wonderful celebration of the life of Jimmy Murphy and his contribution to Manchester United. And I'm sure you will all agree that this is a fitting tribute to the great man in the most appropriate way and I thank his family for their involvement today and of course Alex and Brian. Just to give you some of the behind the scenes here the girls have said they're going in between the two boys in case they fall all right so uh, they've got the support of the legends. Wonderful. Let's hear it for them, ladies and gentlemen. The Murphy family.
And isn't it wonderful we've got the weather? Thank you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the ceremony isn't over just yet. Before we close, we have one further tribute, specially composed for this occasion today. So please, Old Trafford, will you welcome to the stage the renowned poet, Tony Walsh, Acker, the Longfellow. Thank you and what a tremendous honour it is to be here today on this fantastic occasion. Just a couple of very quick thank yous and acknowledgements before I share the poem with you. Um, I'd like to congratulate the Fan Coalition, well done on campaigning for this over the years. I'd like to thank the club of course and Michael Gibson who uh, commissioned the poem for, from me and all the team. I'd like to thank the legend Alex Stepney who gave me some of his time recently to help me with the poem and the, uh, the um, author Wayne Barton, who I hope he's here to shake his hand, his book has been uh, a great help to me. Thank you, Wayne. Club legend also Tony Whelan. The title of the poem, which I'll share in a moment, comes from the dedication at the front of Tony's book. Congratulations to the sculptor, Alan Herriot, magnificent, and a particular thank you to the family, particularly Nick and Paul. Paul spoke with me to help me write the poem, and I shared the poem yesterday with the family, the son, Nick, and Paul, the grandson, and they were very moved by it. And uh, if, if to be able to say I'm sharing the poem today with the blessing of the family means a great deal to me. So will you join me please in, in sharing those thank yous. Thank you. Without further ado. Jimmy Murphy, without whom Matt Busby, Jimmy Murphy, a friendship forged in war, bonded with a longing for the things worth fighting for, a Scotsman and a Welshman, both with Irish in their veins, to Manchester, united by the same love of the game. Both Catholic boys, both miners lads, but very different men. Their minds and souls combine their roles, and then, but then, and then, Old Trafford, 1948, all hope and money gone. Holes and craters, devastation, city blitz with bombs. A bomb site for a stadium, a bonfire made of plans. That time our stands were taken, made it time to take a stand. But they couldn't bomb our spirits, and they couldn't bomb our dreams, and they couldn't bomb the Busby Murphy. Vision for our teams through the trouble, through the struggle, through the rubble, both are clear. We will hold on to our values. Jimmy held his training here. Those values, those ambitions, play with passion, play with flair. See those embers are remembered as a flame that burns in there. That spirit, lads, express yourself. We'll write on history's pages, but work hard to honour those who work so hard to pay your wages. And up together, back together, simple switch attack and never ever giving up and always coming back. With Busby as the focus, Murphy more behind the scenes, scouting, youth team, first team, Jimmy right behind all teams, working 70, 80 hours a week for this club, night and day. He'd go miles and miles and extra miles to watch a young lad play. He would find lads. He would sign lads, he would reassure their mams, he would rule them, he would school them, he would place them in his plans, he would coach them, he'd reproach them, he would get under their skin, he'd show kids that come from Colliest, you've greatness kid, within. He'd train with them, he'd train them, he'd fight them for the ball, inspire them and fire them to high and higher calls. He would stretch them, he would test them, he would polish them like gems. He would take them, he would shape them, he would make them fine young men. And then, when they were ready, and only then, he'd say, Boss, here is a player, and he's ready now to play. And when he spoke, and when... He spoke, 
wild arms, his eyes would glisten. Valley, chapel, pithead, war, your very soul would listen. A quiet man, Leviathan, love symphonies you heard. This Welshman's love in music sung in every single word. Now listen, boys. Now listen up. The thing I must instill is. This is Manchester United. Let's hear old Jimmy still. They would hear him, they might fear him, but he took them to his home. He'd joke with them, he'd smoke with them and treat them as his own. And he grew them and he knew them and he coached them all until they all loved him, really loved him. And those here, they love him still. No greater sight in football than United on the wing. No greater choir with greater fire than when the red choir sings. Young gods who played like angels with a devil on their chest. And all of Europe there before them scoring more each test. And then, and then, the clock stopped. The red, the flames, the snow. Their names always remembered for the games we'll never know. Keep the red flag flying, Jim, said Busby, barely heard. They gave him his last rights there twice, and Jimmy gave his word. Then plunged into all spotlights, all their coffins in the gym. Then pressures upon pressures upon pressures upon him. The calls made on his principles, the sticking to his guns, the calls he made to mothers, telling how they'd lost their sons. And he cried and prayed and tried and slaved and fought to put a team out, working, grieving, hurt, believing, never snuffed the dream out. And Jimmy took communion and his strength of faith still lingered with his rosary, his crucifix worn down between his fingers and Duncan Duncan Edwards the best of all they say without farewell just 22 he fought but slipped away and Jimmy put a team out on, he said, his proudest day. And by God, he flew the flag all right. It flew down Wembley Way. And Busby left his deathbed, reunited with his friend. We'll never die, we'll never die. They taught the Stretford end. We'll play on for ourselves, lads. We will play on for the badge. We will win the European Cup and show it to those lads. And it took magic. It took genius. It took Jimmy's way with kids. It took... It took your breath away. And they did, you know. They did. And sometimes human beings don't just sing. They make a sound that poets have no name for. It still echoes round this ground. And listen, you can hear it. It's called love, and it's the goal. Not 70,000 voices, but a city and its soul. And Sir Alex, he will tell you that the seeds that they had sown bore fruit in his rich harvests from the branches they had grown. And proudly, as a Welshman, proud of never giving up, let's remember this Welsh dragon breathed his fire to their World Cup. And for all of his achievements, he'd say hi among them sits the day when he, a young man, bought his old man out the pit. Men like Jimmy Murphy and the fire that burns inside them, the men who came before them and the ones who stood beside them, let the ones no longer with us tell the ones lined up today this is Manchester United, built on Sir Matt Wusby Busby Way. There is a bond, there is a code, there is a way that Red should play, and the future will be founded on the way we behave today. Let's take 58 and 68, a pinch of 99, and stir it in a cauldron called Old Trafford for all time. Use this history as an engine fired with sparks from all these embers used as fuel the next renewal that our grandchildren remember. 
And Jimmy Murphy wept to you. And Jimmy Murphy slept here. And we promise to remember the great promise Jimmy kept here. And each time you pass his statue, if they ever ask you why, then just point to his clenched fist and to the passion in his eye and then point to all the statues grouped together. They're the ones together, man, united and forever cast in bronze. Then say this is Jimmy Murphy. And you need to know his name and remember that he taught us how the Reds should play the game. And remember how he flew the flag when this club hit rock bottom. He'll never die. We'll never die. He'll never be forgotten. Jimmy Murphy, old pal. Thank you. Turn for Jimmy Murphy. He'll never die. Jimmy Murphy, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, what a special way to end a special event in tribute of an extraordinary man. And again, we thank each and every one of you all of you for attending and honouring the great, the one and only, Jimmy Murphy.